Many choices in internet radio and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery. A reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. I'm joined here by recording artist Lolita Robinson and hey, my co-host. how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to another day of Joy in My I'm House. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited. I want to thank you out there, all our viewers and listeners, for ju- tuning in with us and joining us on the joy that we have in our house. I want you to remember that you can follow us on Facebook backslash Joy in My House. You can tweet us directly on Twitter.com backslash Joy in My House. And if you're watching us right now on W www.latalklive.com you can stream us live on any mobile device on ustream.tv backslash LA Talk Live Radio. We had a great show last week. Yeah we did. A really nice young man and I told Jonathan, his testimony. Jonathan Young. Yep talked about um, going from school and how he found his life and how his father was a good influence mm-hmm. which talking to you gentlemen today <laughs> it's neat to hear it from a man's standpoint raising kids yeah. and that's what you what said you go through yeah you gave him some 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 uh how can you say uh not some pride you told him how well he was as a father yeah because he did he came in and, and partook in his children's upbringing yes and he did and how his father did him exactly you know and he said, like we, we do say, is, you know, it took a village to raise him, mm-hmm. to get him back online. And now he has a village that's going to help his children. And, you know, it's exciting for me sitting here meeting th- different men that have come across. I'm really, really encouraged that, you know, because I have a lot of girlfriends and we talk about, where are the men? You know, they're not showing up, they're not stepping up. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm meeting a lot of men that are stepping up, ladies. And you just have to take your time and be selective but i'm really impressed by the men that have come and i'm impressed by the young man that's going to be on today and you and van and it's just uh it's a blessing for me being that i came from abuse in my past i didn't have a lot of wholesome men around so god is showing me i have some good guys out there and so i'm, I'm blessed to, to sit here well i think for me personally god had to do a work in my life because right. i was not that good guy growing up i was always trying to overachieve mm-hmm. i was always uh, as as confident as I, I thought I was, I was very insecure. Mm-hmm. It was until God gave me some peace and some some grace mm-hmm. that I was able to actually be in my own skin. Where the time that I had wealth and 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 stuff, I was at my worst. Right. And now that I have nothing, I feel like I'm at my best. You're finding yourself. Yeah, and it's well, interesting. it's also like being in the process. You know, me, I'm more like a mother to you. You know, mm-hmm. you're like a son to me. But I think we ladies have to be patient. And realize that just like we are in the process, you men are in the process too. So you are growing into the man that you're becoming. My sons are doing so. So it's 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 awesome to watch. It really is. Well, same here. You know, I think you also give us hope that there are women out there also that they're working on themselves. Not all of them are all about me, me, me. They yeah, are and party and gold diggers and all that exactly. kind of stuff. You know, there's a lot of women that are. In the process. Yeah, in the process. (laughs) So I want to thank you all our listeners and viewers out there who are tuning in. We got a great show for you today by the name of John. John is a chairman to Children United Nations. They have a great upcoming fundraiser. It's the 15th annual Oscar viewing party that will be held in Beverly Hills. That sounds exciting. And all the funds raised Mm -hmm. goes to at-risk foster youth. It's an amazing organization. They've been doing this for 15 years. He's going to come on and promote the event. But not just that. He's going to talk about his life and how foster care has affected him and has made him into the man that he is. See, I like to wait and and meet our guests and things. But you know what's so beautiful about these organizations? We're finding celebrities, too, who want to give back. Mm -hmm. and want to do something greater than themselves to see that they're giving back to these children yes. fosters you know it's that's what it's all about having the platform having the talent whether you're an entrepreneur whether you're a celebrity or whatever you're doing but to take what god has given you and give it back 
that's exciting too to see this. That is. That mm-hmm. is. That's actually inspirational. Mm-hmm. So if you guys are being inspired today, I want you to engage with us. Find us on Facebook backslash join my house and engage with us. If you become a fan, you receive up to date lineups of guests and information. And you can also tweet us directly with any questions or comments on twitter.com backslash join my house. We're going to go a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have John as our in studio guest from Children United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Join My House. Stay tuned. Where did the sweetness go, Lord? Have I fallen from your hand? Am I so far from you, Lord? Is my life I'm Shaquem Williams, and I'm the host of The Shock Factor here on L.A. Talk Live. We broadcast to the world every Friday at 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Live music, live performances, we're just live. Chef Momo, Life MC, Diana, and once again, your host, Shaquem Williams. So come join us every Friday here at L.A. Talk Live. The world leading broadcasting internet radio station. The Shock Factor. The Shock Factor. The shock. Join us on the Shock Factor. This is Brett Chapin. And this is Dorothy Dillingham Blue, inviting you to join us every Saturday at noon Pacific Standard Time for our show, La La Land Talk. Join us as we talk with some of the top talent in LA. Artists Untold Stories. Your phone calls and live on-location broadcasts have made La La Land one of the best sources in L.A. for everything entertainment. So don't forget to tune in to La La Land Talk. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, and now Stitcher Radio. Or watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Saturdays at noon Pacific time. Find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash La La Land Talk. Twitter, twitter.com slash La La Land Talk. Reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live. And we are more than just talk. I think we've got a Shakespeare monologue or two we could do. Yeah. Jazz hands, jazz, jazz hands. hands. Kickball change. Good That's stuff. what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'll do some pippin. Ooh, yeah. Some miming. I'm in a box. I'm in a box. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show. I'm joined here by uh, author of Shape by the Master's Hands and um, my co-host, Lolita Robinson. How are you? Glad to be here and excited to, for the show. And our in-studio guest, John Foggerholm. Yeah, you uh, said that. I, I want to pronounce that correctly. Right. Right. Amazing. Okay. The chairman to Children United Nations. Yeah. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Joel. And nice to meet you, Lolita. Thank you. Very nice to meet you, we too. We always like to let people know how we met. Yes, I met you through know. Deborah Hader, which is our publicist here and does a lot of publicity for LA Talk Live Radio as well as for Lolita. And uh, we were introduced through the, to the organization Children United Nations. And I went to my first committee uh, event for the Oscar 15th annual viewing party that you guys are having. And I got an opportunity to meet you. And you have a pretty amazing testimony. Really? Yeah, well, I don't know about amazing. It is to me. <laughs> just a little I've heard. It's just life. You know, everybody has interesting lives. So, so I, wanna, I, I think most people do. <laughs> so I want to thank you for coming on the show and being faithful enough to come out and take time out of your day because I know you're very busy preparing for this event. But we always like to give our viewers and audience a little background on you. Okay. So where yeah. did you grow up? Well, I grew up all over. My uh, father was in the Army, so moved around quite a bit. Uh, prior to L.A., I've been in L.A. 15 years since law school. So uh, prior to L.A., I lived in Seattle for quite a bit of time. And Yay. before Seattle, Denver for quite a bit of time. And then before that, just everywhere. I mean, you name it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. oh, very interesting. Now, you said your father was in the Army. How what branch? What branch? Army. Army. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a Navy guy, so I... Oh, I, really? Oh, you were in the Navy, too? Yeah, oh, my yeah. goodness. A very Man, interesting felt, story. Yeah, we're going to have a lot to get to here. The USS Nimitz. I think they're about to decommission it. I, I would love to go back on and see it one last time. Really? Where it. were you stationed out of? Uh, well, it was out of Bremerton, but at the time, it was the flagship... When I was on there, it was the flagship of the Navy, so we were never in port. Never, ever, wow. ever in port. Okay. Basically surrounded by steel and men in blue suits. Felt like prison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your growing up life. Um Growing up when you're younger, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, wh- which let's which start age when you, you first yeah. remember about five years old. Yeah. Ooh, wow, five years old. You know, the first thing I remember is my dad killing a snake. Isn't that weird? Okay. Yeah. All right. And and, and and I think that was Kansas City, Missouri. But my background is uh, my father um, actually comes from a um, fairly well-to-do family. Um, dropped out of co- he was the black sheep of the family, so he dropped out of college. Now, is he from Swiss- Switzerland? You well, said that- he's uh, my my grandparents are first generation Swedish. Okay. So they they came over here from Sweden, from and then Sweden. he was well. I guess he would be the first generation. Okay. So he was the first generation um, American born in the in the United States. <clears throat> but he was sort of a black sheep kind of guy, and so he. Why dropped, was that? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think he was an only child, maybe a little spoiled. Who knows? Thought who out knows of the box, probably. Well, I mean, I don't know if he thought so much out of the box mm-hmm. as more, uh, what's that word for people that do things without thinking? Uh, impulsive. 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 He was very impulsive. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, college wasn't for him, and he just dropped out and joined the army, ended up stationed in Africa, and my grandparents didn't even know that he had dropped out of college until wow. he called them telling them he's getting married. So now this is the 60s, so it's a white man marrying a black woman. Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, okay. Because she's, you, right. know, you know, my mother was Ethiopian. Okay. So already, you know. Well, he really did. was. He really did. Well, yeah. <laughs> Already. I think he did kind of think outside of him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Good yeah. for him. Good for him. Well, you know, I, I mean, my father and I don't don't really speak very much or, or, or whatever. But, you know, there's a few things that he that he taught me that, you know, I, I still carry with me. For, for example, tolerance. That's the one thing I remember that he always taught me. Mm-hmm. Um, tolerance for race, tolerance for sex, tolerance, tolerance for preferences. Mm-hmm. So that definitely, um, even growing up in the 80s and where there wasn't much tolerance, as right. you guys probably mm-hmm. know. That's right, yeah. Um, I was always that guy that was like, well, you know, leave the gay kid alone. He's, yeah, he's let fine. him find he's, his path. Yeah, yeah, he's doing his own thing, you know. So, um yeah, I mean, de- definitely um, there were some things that I walked, uh, you know, walked away from from my father. But again, getting back to the foster care stuff, I, I did grow up in a group home mostly. So yeah, I was going to ask you about. I'm, I should know. That's where I was going next with the what yeah, got you ha- into the foster home. Yeah, how did that happen? <clears throat> um, well, my mother turned out she had schizophrenia, oh. and so she went back to Africa, um, supposedly just to visit. And this is when I was eight years old, and uh, never came back; just disappeared. Wow. So, um, I mean, we didn't. I didn't see her again until I was almost thirty. Um, oh. You were the only child in that union. No, no, I have uh, an older sister. And you who's wonderful. Brother. She was actually like my my mother. 
Okay. You know, my, my oldest sister is wow. amazing. Um, and then I have two younger brothers who are also amazing. I mean, they're still. They're like, all from the same same, same family. Yeah. Okay. Same. And same. Then I, okay. Yeah. And then I had a stepsister who I haven't seen in, you know, probably 30 years. But mm -hmm. um, and then a half brother that still lives in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so once my mother left, then my father remarried um, and my stepmother, he, who was also in, in the army, and she was just. Uh, a troubled person. I mean, mm. that's the best way I can say it. So that's we ended good. up in a, long story short, we ended up in a group home because she tried to poison us. Oh, so, wow. yeah. you have quite a story. Yeah, well, you know. Whatever. Gee, yeah, so, but no, really. You yeah. know, I get into the emotional type type of stuff. What was that like? I mean. You know what's funny about growing up in Africa my first few years? Mm -hmm. um, there weren't inoculations that I could remember. So coming over to the U U.S. and then getting the inoculations it just made me uh, superhuman, I like to call it, because mm -hmm. I never got sick, and I still rarely ever, ever get sick. Mm -hmm. So um, when that was going on, my middle brother was getting sick, and we from the poison, yeah, uh, from whatever she was doing, and we couldn't figure out why he was getting sick, because it was just weird. And then it, I don't know how they figured it, it out. It unfolded but it, into yeah, 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 because uh, none of us ever caught colds, never missed a day of school, you know, nothing. So you know, her and my father were having problems, and. You know, that was her way of uh, getting back at him, I guess. So the, the system came in and took you kids out of the... <clears throat> well, my, at that time, my sister at 16 had already um, left. She had already uh, went off and started living on her own. Mm -hmm. I think she was with two roommates, dropped out of high school and was working at McDonald's, you know. Wow. Um, because it was just too much, you know, the, the yeah. physical too abuse. Too volatile. Right. Yeah. And... Um, my my sister would take the blame for a lot of stuff and take the punishments for us. So at some point wow. it just got to be too much, you know, for her. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, so it was just me and my, my two brothers. And so, uh, you know, first of all, we were separated for, for a few months. Um, and, you know, the way the system is, just it's just a terrible system. I don't know if it's gotten any better since I've been in it. but I don't think so. Um, I started out in a juvenile home. Now, and you weren't in any kind of trouble. Never had done anything wrong. Oh, never been in trouble with John, the law. You have and they just stories. stuck me in a juvenile home with, you know, kids that had uh, committed crimes. Committed crimes, um, you know, acts of violence, uh, wow. you know, different things like that. So, that was my first probably 6 to 8 months in the system. Um, oh boy. And then from there, um, they found a group home and luckily they found a group home which is very rare for all three of us to be together, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Um, but by that time, I think I'd gotten a little bit hardened just from where I was. And mm -hmm. so my, my mindset was completely different. You know, I wasn't Well, that. of course. Having that experience <clears throat> yeah. emotionally, you, you create these walls yeah. and these boundaries to protect yourself. Right. So I was no longer that kid that was really loved reading and, you know, was into... Wow. It's probably you know, survival. Teen movies. And, no, know, yeah, I guess I wasn't not. That kid anymore. <laughs> but did you did you take on a life of crime yourself, or, um, or you just you know, kind of? I, I wasn't I wasn't much of a criminal. <laughs> there there was always something about me, some little moral standard. I don't even know where it came from because honestly, I, you know, it wasn't as if my father was. Well, we like to say God had his hand yeah, on yeah. you. We yeah. like to say God had his hand on you. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. That's that's. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you, what appreciation appreciation did you have for family once you were put in that home? Well, definitely got closer with my brothers because, mm -hmm. um, again, e even that group home, a lot of troubled kids. And now, so, explain a group home. What, when you say a group home, is it like well, an orphanage? or? Yeah, sort of. So so they called it group home. So I don't know the difference between a group home and an orphanage, to be honest with you. But uh, I know foster care, you're, you're put in with a family. But in group homes, there's a home and people work there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you have your own rooms, or were you able to bring well, your brothers? Or no, no. Um, they divided us up in age groups. So there was the I think kids that were 13 and over. Then there was something like 12 to 13, and then people that were the kids that were under that. So mm -hmm. usually um, roomed with people similar in your age, similar to your age. Um, but Where was it, your dad in all this? I mean, he just um. I go really there, so if you don't want to go there, just <laughs> I just get into the real, you know. Well, you, you know that's the thing about my about my dad. He was always that guy that just didn't want hassle, and I, you know, he, he wasn't he wasn't a bad guy initially, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm not saying he's a bad guy now, just but he wasn't a bad guy initially. I remember as a kid when my mother was around, um, you know, he was always fairly aloof and didn't pay attention kind to the of kids. Distant, kind, kind of, of worked, came yeah. home, watched TV. That was his thing. Mm -hmm. you okay, know, you know, okay. so well said. Um, yeah, and. Uh, you know, he wasn't the type that would play ball with you or, or, or do any of that. Um, he was there basically to earn money and punishment. That was okay. sort of his role, I think. His role. Um, 
Um, and then once my mother left, I think I actually think he really loved my mother. And so um, he was just looking for someone just to get the stress of having kids off of his plate. Mm -hmm. And and so then that's I, how it happened. And then he, yeah. And then he still wanted to live this life of working all day, coming home, sitting on the couch and watching TV. And I think so he, he basically just took a blind eye to whatever else was going on outside of, you know, or inside the, the family unit. Your story is even more impressive. I'm glad I didn't find all that out. So I'll I'll lay off that. But that's awesome. Yeah. Well, now wow. growing up in the foster home, who were some of your heroes at the time? Because mm -hmm. that's um, kind of a difficult yeah, age. How do you find them? Yeah. And yeah, who do you look up to at that time? Well, in the neighborhood I grew up in, of course, we... Yeah, you said we, it was an all-black neighborhood, uh, huh? Well, a uh, uh, black, Latino, and um, immigrant working class. Well, you know, where Vietnamese. was this? It was in Denver. Oh, Denver. Yeah, okay. yeah it was uh, north side of Denver. Okay. Yeah, which is wonderful now, by the way, but when I was there, it was a total mess. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, uh, in the neighborhood, of course, the... The uh, the heroes were the pimps, the drug dealers, and the numbers wow. runners. You okay. know what I mean? Those are the guys we looked up to because they had the good cars and uh, the ladies. And lifestyle, yeah. The lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, they had that great lifestyle. But um, people outside of where I lived, obviously Bruce Lee. You, you and I had talked about that, Joel. Because oh, you yeah, are a martial two. artist. Yeah, yeah these two men. <laughs> <laughs> the scene before really, the show really was awesome. It. A bromance, uh, as they say. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Always really um, inspired by Benjamin Franklin, believe it or not. Even as a kid, I would read about Benjamin Franklin. Oh, There's just something about Isn't him that, 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 Why? that captured me. Well, it's the fact that he was great at everything he did. A great statesman, you know, politician, a great inventor, um, great philosopher. Um, you know, so when you read this guy's story mm -hmm. coming over as a teenager from England, didn't grow up um, with a lot of money and really figured out how to how to make it. You know, he was well, such good a, for you. So you found a mentor. Yeah. Um, no, in a way, without realizing it. Yeah. So I read a lot about uh, Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Let's see, Bruce Lee, Benjamin Franklin. There's somebody else. What a combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from one side. But that's to you, the other. kind of, as we talk. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah, and so I was uh, really inspired by, by that. I was really into um, combat and war. I mean, I, I, I don't know why as a kid I really loved reading about World War II and uh, um, uh So you did get military. your reading back. You did get your desire to read back because oh, you said when you were in the juvenile hall, you kind of – Well, you, 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 know, you know, once once I was living in that neighborhood, you had to hide that you were smart, which is really a, a, yeah. a messed up thing mm -hmm. to you know for kids. I remember the – the, the one time when I was in a group home and I decided to really buckle down and do some work and got on honor roll, I didn't realize they announced it. You know? oh. Uh, oh, yeah. uh oh So, wow. um, so the, you know, they make so many announcements and you don't even, you don't even think about it. But mm -hmm. honor roll was basically a bunch of Vietnamese names, mm -hmm. a few white kids, and then suddenly and then my name came up. Wow. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> why did you guys do well, this to me? Because of that, you ended up going to University of Washington. Let's this talk is about impressive. that. Yeah, you know. Well, was there somebody in there in the home who kind of, I can't imagine you just, was there somebody that talked to you? I think you were asking him that. Was there somebody in the home that kind of yeah, led in the group you a home? Bit? No, no, not, not at, at all. all. It's it's. Uh, it was from the, the book. The people that that work that work at group homes mm -hmm. are typically people transitioning to something else. So okay. it's not. I mean, it's a job. I think for them. All right. Um, I, the lady that owned the group home was really caring and really loved the kids, but she had multiple group homes. So she right. Was, you right. Know, she wasn't around that often. It was uh, so you know she hired people, and actually the the first guy that. Uh, uh, that worked there when I was there. Um, the you know the main guy running it was an abusive prick. Can I say prick on the yeah, air? You yeah, can. yeah. Okay. definitely ahead. a guy that slapped the kids around. Oh, geez. Wow. Um, oh. That was the 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 first time I ever smoked weed. The very first time I ever got drunk. Wow. First time I ever shot a gun. <laughs> so it was trying, ever... to, trying to escape that pain. Trying to. <laughs> no, no. I'm I'm saying I did it with this guy. This this. Wow. Uh, yeah, he wasn't. Uh, when I look back at it, this guy was was something else. Wow. And you know, he would slap his wife around in front of us. This it wasn't a good guy. He he should definitely shouldn't have been around children. So what you're saying? So you were self motivated. See, we talked a lot of the young people and we try and give them kind of like inspiration if they're in bad situations which obviously you were so basically what you're saying you were self-motivated can you talk to the, somebody out well, there who might he, be? here's here's what i think it is uh -huh. and and um i think it's that um for every boy you need your mother to make you feel and think you're the greatest thing that's ever lived mm -hmm. and uh, you know and for that's every important. Girl, I think the father has to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when I was growing up, you know, based on the Ethiopian culture, oldest male, I 
couldn't do any wrong in my mother's eyes. She always oh, told me I was wow. amazing and I was the That's best. Great. And you know, there's a there's a funny uh, photo of me cutting my sister's birthday cake. <laughs> oh, you did it! <laughs> oh, right. Wow! Because I was like, I want to cut your birthday cake. <laughs> and you're the you're the yeah. Because I was wow. I was the oldest male, and wow. I couldn't do any wrong. So right? that was instilled in you. So yeah, you and the so first I six think, years of your life, they, that's very important. Yeah, the the, the first eight years, and so um, <clears throat> I I think that probably had to something to do with it because I always had a weird sort of confidence even though when I shouldn't even though I would make mistakes even though I didn't know what I was doing yeah. I always had this thing where I was like ah I can do it I can do anything mm-hmm. I'm amazing yeah, you okay know. But that, <laughs> well <laughs> no that, looking, that, that's my at thinking you, right you know I mean? but looking and, at your so, accolades you yeah. did do some amazing things going to the University of Washington you undergraduated with a sociology major why sociology okay so this is this is gonna be good. I already yeah, know. Yeah. Well, you had to do. Well, you were in honor roll. That's what you said in high school and stuff. So well, once, grades. once. Okay. <laughs> yes. It wasn't yeah. cool to be on honor. <laughs> it happened once, then you decided not yeah, to do yeah, that again. Like, I'm not doing that. Well, you again. had to do good enough to get into uh, Washington State. Well, uh, well you, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't University. do well in high University. school, honestly, okay. and and partly because um, I didn't have to, and partly because um, I wanted to work and make money. I was all about making money. Um, and so I worked full time and school was just kind of passive from there. I went to the Navy, mm-hmm. um, because I didn't know what else to do. And I got my girlfriend in high school pregnant. <laughs> so it I, happens. Needed, I needed to it you know, support a kid on the way. So, yeah. so I, 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 do I, I get along <laughs> <laughs> Your stories, no, okay. You know, identical stories, yeah, parallel uh, stories, yes. Bad upbringing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's that independent mind <clears throat> thinking that we can do it on our own, that we have it under control. We're going to manipulate. We're going to be successful. And for me, I got blindsided when things didn't work out my way. I was like, why isn't it working out my way? But for you, it seems like you were very self-motivated. You kept, you kept grinding going, it kept out. Grinding, went to the, so let's talk about the, the Navy. Navy. The Navy helped kind of shape. Well, the, my original plan was to do 20 years in the Navy and then get some you know, piss-ass job somewhere and, and have two paychecks. That was my big <laughs> Your grand scheme. Your grand <laughs> well, that, better than being the pimp yeah, and stuff yeah, that you right. saw. <laughs> but, but, but then I actually got to the Navy and figured out that there's people telling you what to do every day. Oh, right? yeah. I, I don't like, know okay. why you thought that was going to yeah. be a walk. Yeah, yeah, so that did not work for me because I'm just way too independent. You know, just way too independent. Um, and so I knew I wasn't going to spend, you know, my life doing that. And and I, I got to travel, which was wonderful. Yeah. Um, but as soon as I got out of the Navy, um, you know, I wanted to have my own business and do my own thing. And so um, I was actually fairly successful with these small little businesses that I started. But the problem was I didn't know what I was doing. Well, what kind of businesses were they? Um First thing I started was a kickboxing studio. Oh, yeah, uh, that is yeah. interesting. Okay, so, now I know your face just <laughs> lit up like a tree. <laughs> um, but one business where I yeah, where, where I made a ton of money and then lost it all was um, a car buying business. So I wrecked uh, the new car that I bought, and a friend of mine, uh, you know, the the um, insurance company called it a total loss. But a, f- a friend of mine looked at it and said, "Hey, this is." This Fixable. is still good, yeah. You know, we can, and they sold it back to me for six hundred bucks. Spent another five grand fixing it, and then sold it for, um, you know, twice that. And back then in Washington, before CarMax came out, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but back car then, box, whatever. CarMax. But back yeah. then, you you have a car that was totaled. You just take it to the uh, highway patrol, and they give you a whole new title. They wouldn't even stamp salvage on it. Wow. So after that, I started buying these these uh, high end cars, Mercedes, uh, Ferraris, uh, you know, all these great that cars got, that got totaled. Yeah, that that the insurance company considered a total, and then we would pay to fix them up. So I was driving these great new cars every week, wow. and looking like a big shot, making a lot of money. But then I ended up um, getting sued really badly. Well, when people by, got by in those, bank. those those no no not by the people. Oh. The the guy that I partnered up with that knew everything about cars. I don't want to mention his name, but um, <laughs> his father was a very um, successful businessman in Seattle. But he was kind of the loser son, and. Um, he was spending our money on strippers and cocaine. Oh, and I did not know it. this. That'll do <laughs> so it. So we had taken out a bunch of bank loans and all these different things, and everything was in my well, name. Well, so you didn't lose. Well, so you yourself didn't lose it, but the guy who you partnered up with did. Right, but uh, but I, I lost the business, right. and then I got sued by a bank for quite a bit of money, and then I hired this attorney, and he was this wonderful guy. I just found out he died um, about a week ago, which Sorry. broke my heart. Was he sick? Um, yeah, they said he died in his sleep mm. suddenly or whatever. But anyway, this guy was a, a phenomenal lawyer that just did something. And that's the first time I was like, oh, wait a minute. I should be a lawyer. This is actually pretty cool. 
you Man. know, people people quake in their boots when this guy picks up the phone, you know. Okay. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I you like really this. do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I really like this. So then um, that's when I decided to enroll in college. And I got lucky because um, I didn't get good grades in high school and I didn't um, – I didn't take the LSAT, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then not LSAT. That's for law school. The SATs. Uh, SATs, right? And so when I did take the SATs, I didn't study, and so math really screwed me. Everything else I did well on, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> math, math you can't fool. Yeah, 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 math, yeah, math you can't fool with that. Didn't know anything <laughs> on, on the math. English, you can kind of, you know, you know, but but I convinced uh, I convinced a guy um, to give me a chance, and he and he did give me a chance. Wow. He, yeah. Um, R.J. Braxton. I don't know if you're out there listening, but but we're still good friends, actually. Uh, R.J., wonderful guy. Mm-hmm. He he said, okay, I'm going to enroll you in the summer session. Um, and see if, how you do. Yeah, see how you do. He got me in, did well there, enrolled in fall, tanked. Right? Oh, really? Tanked. Why? Just because. You know, because I thought, uh, you know. You got this. I, I, can, I got I can it. Yeah, I can, I can do this easily. And you still weren't studying. Uh, I wasn't studying. And the summer session, I studied and worked hard and realized it's not so hard. And then, uh, and plus, you know, I was working full time, I was raising a kid, you know, I was... Do you think there was two parts of you, parts that were very successful, but do you think there was parts of you that kind of sabotaged a little bit in your life, uh, Well, I, I think some of it is Having that overconfidence. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I think I can do things, and... So you really um, thought you could And even when it. I fail, I still think I can do it, and I'm like, yeah. ah, Well, you'd I be hard to live with. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to ask you about your personal life. Yeah. If there's a Mrs. John out there or a girlfriend, you must have your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's let's talk about college. So so you, you tank and fall, but you still. Well, RJ, you know, mm-hmm. saw that I tanked and took right, me in, like, and was really disappointed in me and was like, "Man, I gave you a chance and look, you screwed me." And so from that day forward, I was like, "All right, I'm not, I'm not going to let this happen again." So he was a little Eskimo, as they say in our program, someone yeah. to help you find your way. Yeah, yeah, Kinda. yeah. He was wonderful, wonderful. Good. We still stay in touch to this day. Um, so I picked sociology because. Um, that was the easiest uh, I see. discipline because I already knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a lawyer, and so you could take any class to be a just uh, to get into law school. You yeah, yeah. So I didn't need I didn't need to take you know physics to be a lawyer. So right. why why make my life more difficult for, mm-hmm. for myself? So mm-hmm. so I took sociology. Um, and it's funny because all the athletes are in sociology. Oh, they are. Okay, okay. <laughs> all the athletes now, now you in know the and, all the now and you, you meet all the bleeding heart women yeah. too. Come on now. Listen, here's That's the funny. <laughs> Sociology um, has all the athletes and all the pretty girls. That's yeah. what they so, do. So what is it about pretty girls that makes them want to? <laughs> because we want to take all you handsome guys <laughs> home and nurse you and make you right? into these wonderful men that we know you can be. <laughs> Important lesson: if you look good, you don't have to work. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Important lesson: they, they do get they do get perks. That's true. Yeah. That's great. But I want to talk about graduating from the two-year accelerated scale program. That's that's cool. What's that that was, impressed me. So let's a, talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just wanted to get on with my life of, of, of being a lawyer. And so when I was looking around um, for which law school I wanted, and I wanted to be in, in Southern California because I, I, I uh, wanted to be an entertainment lawyer. That's that's what I do now, and that's what I wanted. So um, let me just ask you a question. So you can't go straight to be a lawyer. You have to do something else to get your two-year degree first or bachelor's? Uh, you well, your four-year degree. Your four-year. Four year. Yeah, so then you, you go to law school. Well, no. Then you take the LSAT. Oh, you're kidding. And then, and then if you do well on the LSAT. Then you get accepted to a law, to oh, a law school. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you could just go straight straight out when you're 18 and do it. I didn't know that. Wow. Okay. Okay. They make it difficult. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Well, let's talk about that. So you want to get on with your life. You Mm want to accelerate. Well, so I I looked around and I got scholarships at um, Pepperdine, Southwestern, Loyola, and what's another one around here? There's some other Don't look at us. Uh, I can't remember. (laughs) Uh, So my brother, my youngest brother was in the Army or in the Air Force down here. uh, Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I came to stay with him for a week and just checked out the law schools. I thought I was going to go to Pepperdine. Went to Pepperdine, saw the campus. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah. The beach. Some of the you, hottest women you'll you ever see. You knew you would not do school. <laughs> I knew I was not graduating. Smart man. I knew I was not graduating because I know myself. I, I, I like to take things to the extreme and I knew good I would take you. having a good time to the extreme. Good for you. So, Way so, to be disciplined. See, yeah. he's a disciplined yeah. man here. That's right. Good. Yeah. You got to plan it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to well you got to know yourself and plan it. Okay. So then um then I went to uh Loyola because they they gave me a pretty good scholarship. That's a um, good school, really good. Yeah. And um you know, when I went to Loyola, they, they they were expecting me, they they knew I was coming. They just didn't roll out the the red carpet for me. Um and 
being someone with, I don't know, I guess it would be the ego or, or whatever it was. I was like, well, if you're not going to celebrate that I'm coming here. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I'm out of here. <laughs> to what Loyola. was that supposed to look like? To Loyola. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, so, my gosh. So then um, just on a whim, my, then oh, that I had also gotten in, into the University of Washington. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to go to the University of Washington. My life is there anyway. That's a good and then, I, and then, I'll, yeah, and then, and then I'll come back here. And my brother said, well, why don't you check out Southwestern since you got in there also? So we called them while we were on the road. They said, yeah, come over and check it out. And when I came, they rolled out the red carpet. Oh, my goodness. So how does that so, look? What, what, what did they do that was? A name tag prepared for me already <laughs> when they weren't expecting me. A name tag for my brother. <laughs> There you're you honest. go. Yeah. Some it, escorts honest. to escort lunch. you on campus. Yeah, lunch. lunch. Yeah. Good for you. A pretty girl to escort us. That's all right. Uh, go ahead, right. John. Go ahead. I'm cracking <laughs> up. Then, Good for you. Here was the kicker, though. So then they said, hey, we want to introduce you to a, a, a professor. Um, you know, a professor that was free, and it turned out to be Karen Smith. And I had just watched the uh, some documentaries about the Black Panthers, which I was really into um, civil rights and wow. how all that came about. And she was on the defense team for Huey P. Newton. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, you yeah. got you. So, so already I was impressed, and I was talking to her, and we were having this great. We spent probably two hours together, and then she was telling me about the program that she's head of, which was Scale, mm -hmm. um, which is a two-year accelerated program. And she said, "I think you'd be good for this. You should." You should do it. It's really intense. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't make it, you wow, know. And I God. thought, okay, this, so this is like boot camp. Oh, you know, yeah, for you, you, you know, you could do it. You yeah, know, yeah, you could do it. Yeah, wow, yeah. wow. So, so I knew, you know, it was just like boot camp. And, and I said, okay, I'll do it because I was really impressed with her. Really liked her. And she unfortunately just passed away too. No. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance wow. to say bye to her. She was one of my inspirations. But, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. yeah well, how did yeah. you do in that program? Okay. Did you take so again? <laughs> did you yes, take? again. <laughs> Again, so 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 here here's the program. It's it, it's very intensive and Sounds it's very like it. and it's very cutthroat. So we started with 32 and graduated 18 because they Ooh. just knock people out yeah. if you're not if you're not if you're not keeping for, up. Yeah, yeah, you're out of there. So the the first uh, the first uh, testing period, I worked hard like a beast, you know, like, which which I always do. And then was at the top of the class and then thought, oh, this is there you ass. go, you get so happy. <laughs> yeah, and then did the same thing. The next set of grades, I was like, oh man, okay. I'm I'm on the edge. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm one of those that are about to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then then I spent my time working hard and you know and figuring see everything has a system. So you just got to figure out the system. And what I figured out with the law school system, and I tell this to law students but they don't believe me because their professors tell them something else. What you do in class absolutely doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. One test at the end of the at the end of the semester. Oh God! Is what cover determines. your ears, please. No, what is, no this is no. law school. What okay. determines your grade? It's the one and test. the professor doesn't know who you are because it's a random number that that you're given. Mm -hmm. So it's not they can that like they can say, oh, he didn't um, come participate in class. He right. didn't come. To, none of that matters. So after the first year, the second year was very easy for me because all I did was study in class. Good then I didn't you. have to study outside of class for this stuff because I studied during class. The professor would call on me and say, did you do your reading? Nope. Didn't read a thing. Wow. <laughs> but it you, didn't matter. But like you said, you knew it was that one big test. All it was is okay, the test. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Didn't matter what you did in class. Okay. So all I did each class was study for, for, for the test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and mm -hmm. it worked and, out well. And that's what I want to talk about because you Goodness. received a scholarship. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Let's talk about that. The Schumacher scholarship. The Schumacher so scholarship. it definitely wasn't for well, grades. Okay. It was it was for um, background basically, mm -hmm. mm. um, because you know they they want people in the legal field that have backgrounds, not just smart people. Because you know there's a lot of people that have certain types of lives where you go from high school to college to you know and mom and dad pay for all of that stuff mm. and right. take care of you. Right. So that may not necessarily. Uh, create the best legal community mm -hmm. you, you know what i mean so they want people from all kinds of backgrounds and they, they seem to like my my business background mm -hmm. so uh, and let's talk about so you got your doctorate jeez now your your juris law doctorate. degree your juris doctorate congratulations yeah. to you yeah you, you had a right? really really hard time i mean you know i i look at the develop the development of people's lives and you had a lot to overcome because that could have torn other people down mm -hmm. but that's the key to it is wow. hardships because it's the it's the problems that make you successful. Say not that the, again. It's the problems that make you successful, not the successes that oh, make you successful. Oh wow, John, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Very yeah. well said. Wow. Because that's what I was going to get into next. How do you feel that the foster foster living prepared you mm -hmm. for this next 
chapter in your life? Well, you you know what the, you know what uh, the group home experience taught me, and living in neighborhoods like that mm-hmm. is, no matter who I am, I know I can switch to that person that I have to be. Uh, you know, in, in a particular around. situation. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I like yeah. I know that. Um, I know I have that in me. It's, it's just like fighters. You know when fighters are like, oh, they're great guys, but yeah. when they get in the cage. They, they turn it on. Yeah, they can turn on. Mm-hmm. So I know that I can turn on that whatever I need, that survival mode, whatever whatever you want to call it. I know it's there. Mm-hmm. They're, but they're, it's authentic because you've been yeah, there. Yeah. And Lolita talks a lot about that credibility. You yeah, know, when you, you have walk creds. the block on that, when you literally walk the block in that block, you prepare, you're, you're getting prepared. Well, that's what I'm saying. You I recommend it to everybody. <laughs> oh, no. Huh? Get well, into I, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> Run away from home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, well, you're funny, too. That's what I want to talk about next. Um, usually, we go to a commercial break, but it's going so well. I want to just yeah. kind of continue. It's I want to like talk that. about uh, Children United Nations. What placed it on your heart yeah, now? Yeah, how'd you get there? To well, give back. It, it just found me. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, something that I was looking for. And I've always... Um, you know, whenever I hear about uh, someone that had hardships, and tons of people do. Yeah, but wait, you, before he goes there, you became a lawyer, right? Yeah. Entertainment lawyer. Mm-hmm. You're jumping all over. Okay. So well, I'm going to go back to that okay, after okay, we talk about right, him yeah. being I have involved. to wait. Okay, I get so excited. Go ahead. <laughs> so so it, it just found me. So Daphna Zyman um, is one of the only uh, females in the world that owns her own network. That's right. Oprah being... The, you know the other one. Oh, I didn't know she had her own network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I started doing legal work for Daphna, and we met at a at a at a film charity thing that I'm also on the board of. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we hit it off. I started doing legal work for her um, for her company uh, for her uh, channel, and we were just talking, and she was telling me about this charity, and I was like, oh, you know, I grew up in a group home oh boy and so, so then, that was wow. a marriage made yeah. in heaven right then, there then she forced me to come on the board because oh. you know you, Daphne's one of those people you don't say <laughs> you no don't to. say no <laughs> I don't know why yeah. but you just can't you say can't, no yeah. she, she's not mean when she asks you she's not forceful but for some reason you just want to do stuff for her well you must believe in her she yeah, has yeah. credibility she's a she's, yes. a, she's, a, she's, a, she's a, an amazing lady I, yeah. really, I really actually I love her it used to be I liked her a lot now I actually love her she's, yeah she's you look wonderful. like the type that can sniff out crap I'm just saying you know yeah so uh, she asked me to be on the board, um, which I decided was, you know. When, when did this happen? Probably almost a year ago now. So this is new. Is this, <clears throat> is this a new organization? No, the organization has been around. They're yeah, having the 15th yeah. annual event, but yeah. this is here. Yeah, I'm, I was this new to the board. This is when you came in. Right. Okay. okay. And then at some point, the uh, the director of the board resigned. Mm-hmm. Uh, just Recently. she had other things going on. And, and so they asked me to be director since I... I don't know. Guess knew a lot about foster care yeah, from experience. You, yeah, you so, do. Yeah, um, yeah you that's do. how it happened. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And now, so I'm you can do it from the business and from the heart. And exactly. What a that's great right. combo. Yeah. That's what I call being bilingual in life. We talk about having, from our passport, from having recovery from addictions, and you know, and then having spirituality and combining the two makes you a powerful force. Because you've been there. Speaking of bilingual, this is a little bit off topic, that's but okay. it was something I was thinking about yesterday. If I could go back. And with the same mindset that I have now, the same experience that I have now, and what I would do differently, the one of the things I decided yesterday when I was thinking about this, and I just think about weird stuff when I'm walking in my car or whatever, is I would have um, really learned a, a second language, which I didn't do. And English is not even my first language, but I forgot my first language. You learned right English, it. and then learned Spanish at one point, but just completely forgot it because I never used well, it. Mm-hmm. So for for everyone out there, especially the the kids, you have to be bilingual. There's yeah. something not only impressive about it, but um, it will really get you far in life. So many times I've been in foreign countries and, um, uh, you know, they don't always speak English. We think they always speak English, but mm-hmm. they don't. Mm-hmm. But if you even speak one other language, it's going to make a difference. I wish I had done it, and I'm going to well, go back and do that, actually. I'm sure you will. Mm-hmm. Rosetta I, I believe that. Rosetta Stone <laughs> is waiting for you. No, but that's very well said. Well, I no, keep I telling to... my son. Be bilingual. Yeah, you Learn. have to be. It's yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted to fast forward now, and then we'll go back to the event. But I wanted to talk about you becoming co-managing partner Jeez. at Metal Law When do you Group. sleep? Uh. When do you sleep? <laughs> oh, I love oh, sleeping. Oh, and then I got to get the personal life. Is there a Mrs. John? Or, <laughs> well, uh, that's in transition. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't want to okay, talk about okay, that too okay. much. Well, good luck, lady. You got to <laughs> You're a good man. It's in transition. Probably, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I did want to talk about you becoming be co-managing partner. At the at the group. Well, Let's talk it, about that. Yeah, you know, I went to law school too because I'm an entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always hustled. You still my own have money. the kickboxing 
Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, okay. That was right. yeah, that was years ago. Okay. But um, so I was becoming a lawyer to have my own law firm, not to work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the sucker move. Everybody, don't work for anybody else. Work <laughs> okay. for yourself. Write the checks. Don't have checks written. To you. I hear you on All that, right. though. You but write. Anyway, so so um, right out of law school, I I uh, started my own firm, um, and my partner now, my my main partner. You know, there's several partners, but my main partner and one of my best friends. Um, I had always told him in law school we were, we were going to be partners. He's like, no, no, no. So he was working for Virgin at the time, and then Virgin started cutting hours because the music business wasn't doing well. Mm-hmm. And so he was working four days at Virgin, one day at the firm with me, mm-hmm. and then within several months he was making more money in one day than he was making in four. Wow! wow. And for so Virgin then, Records. Yeah. Amazing. So then he and I teamed up, and mm-hmm. then we started Fogger, Home, and Jefferson, and that was uh, that was going on for several years, eight, nine years maybe. And then at some point, as we started bringing on more partners and more attorneys, the name just got out of hand. I think at one point it was Fogger Home Jefferson Singh and Nagum. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like, okay, this is out of hand. <laughs> right. Murphy. <laughs> right. But that just goes to show yeah. wow. the, the, the drive that you had and how successful Jeez. you were because you were just kept grinding it out. Yeah. But this yeah. is entertainment lawyer. Yeah, entertainment. What law. made you choose the entertainment law? Movies. Okay. And television. Movie buff. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Uh, I remember growing up, and no matter how bad the circumstances were, I could always turn on Three's Company and be like, that's ah, that was one of my movies. That's how I've yeah. grown yeah. up. Chips that or, I, you know, any of this movies. stuff. Movies. Yeah. yeah, so movies is the thing that yeah. kids, so that's, you wanted to represent these poor saps who? Well, <laughs> 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 no, it, it, it was I wanted to do to do deals. Well, first of all, I wanted to live in California, so I would watch shows like Chips and and uh, Three's Company and see them riding the beach. And it's like, why why am I in in Denver, cold we? Denver or yeah. right in Seattle? <laughs> <laughs> why, why do people live in these cities? Why doesn't yeah. everybody? And then you live see in three California? companies, and you see the girls wearing the little shorts <laughs> oh, right course, on Santa Monica. Of course, of course. I'm yeah. living in yeah, the wrong yeah, yeah, place. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the isn't that the the, the California dream? Whatever well, no, takes. what I was saying isn't that the biggest motivator for men? That's that's what God it's knew. Pretty girl. That's it's why he so put Eve there. That's God knew that. Every <laughs> pastor we get here, some girl at the youth group got him, got him, got him to go to the... <laughs> so here's something else for, for young men. Okay. The reason why you want to do well and be successful is that you can get the hottest girls you can okay. get. Okay. Right? Because right. if you could sit on a couch eating potato chips <laughs> and getting hot chicks... I wouldn't be a lawyer. <laughs> I'd be sitting on a couch somewhere eating potato chips. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that right? Now no, I know why true. you're in training. <laughs> 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 yeah. right. Well, I did want to touch base on there the organization. Fun. This is great. We're yeah. gonna, I am going to go to just a quick commercial break, but we're going to wow. talk about Children United Nations. You guys have a great uh, charity yeah. fundraiser coming up on March 2nd in the old I believe it's the original Warner Brothers Estates in Beverly Hills. That's right, Harry Warner. Yeah, wow. owned that estate. Okay, and it's okay. wonderful. Okay. It's it's an ama- The grounds are amazing. If yeah. you want, take a look at it. Go to ChildrenUnitedNations.com right now. Org. Dot org. Or, org. Yeah. For information regarding that, but regarding the event, you want to go to GoChildren.org. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about this amazing fundraiser. It's the 15th annual Oscar viewing party. We'll be right back. This is Join My House, ladies and gentlemen. His praises. Everybody sing hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbors all the great things God has done for you. The waves are crashing and abrasing. The trees are swaying in the breezes. The angels got your way. Keep your faith, it's a brand new day. He points his mighty finger, commands the mountains in the sea. And I will tell of the great things he's done. I'll shout out loud, I am is the one. Jump up and shout his praises. Everybody sing hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbors all the great things God has done for you. The waves are crashing and abrasing. The trees are swaying in the breezes. people 
and he rested for a spell. He had a drink of water with the woman by the well. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. He saved her no from the raging flood. Jump up and shout his praises. Everybody sing hallelujah. Turn around and tell your neighbors all the great things God has done for you. The waves are crashing and a prison. The trees are swaying in the breezes. The angels got your way. Keep your faith as a prayer. Everybody sing hallelujah Turn around and tell your neighbors All the great things God has done for you The winds are crashing and appraising The trees are swaying in the breezes The angels got your way Keep your faith, it's a brand new day Jump up and shout his praises Everybody sing hallelujah Turn around and tell your neighbors All the great things God has done for you The winds are crashing and appraising The trees are swaying Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery, a reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant, and that's all I'm going to say because I want to get right back to this. This is fun. I'm joined here by my co-host, recording artist Lolita Robinson, and our in-studio guest, which is the chairman to Children United Nations. John, welcome back to the show. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I did want to touch and talk about the organization itself. Um, The organization was founded by... Daphna Zyman. Daphna Zyman. Now, mm-hmm. with help from Hillary and Bill Clinton. That's right. Oh, that's really? right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And wow. they were guest honorees at, at several of her charity uh, fundraisers as well. Yeah, they they helped her uh, found found this. Um, uh, obviously, they're not as involved. Uh, you know, uh, Bill Clinton has his own charity that he mm-hmm. works on, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and Hillary because she's. Um, is she still Secretary of State? Yes, she, she is. still yeah. is. Yeah. Well, because no, she's, no, no, she's not. Now it's uh, John. Oh, she's not Secretary of State anymore. It's John. Yeah, yeah I thought. Oh, I can't I, think I of his name I right now. Something. For some reason, I still yeah. thought okay. she was. But, 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 but anyway, because of her uh, political aspirations, you can't really, you know, mix, cross, yeah, mix and match. Just like, so, but, but what most people don't realize is that Bill Clinton was a foster kid. Wow. And he was also really? a Rhodes Scholar. So what does that tell you? Oh, man. Be smart, study hard. Be smart and study hard. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, it was founded to protect the children who have no voice, whose fragile lives are being abused and lost by the millions due to uncertainties and out of control. Uh, Children United Nation is dedicated to reshaping their lives of at-risk foster youth through positive mentoring and academic advocacy. So that is their mission statement. So if you're out there wanting to find out more information about Children Uniting Nations, Mm -hmm. please visit the website at childrenunitednations.org. That'll give you the information regarding the, the the ministry itself. But now let's talk about this now one thing amazing is John Kerry. John Kerry now is our Secretary of State. John Kerry. Oh, that's okay. right. Okay. Okay. Good one. <laughs> Way <laughs> to keep up on the politics. That's it. I, <laughs> well, now I want to talk about this amazing uh, uh, fundraiser that you're doing. It's the Children United Nations 15th Annual Oscar Viewing Party. Mm-hmm. Now, the honoree is going to be Cassidy Mack. Um, she has her own organization called Love Gives Chances. I believe that's right. And she's 12 years old, I believe. And wow. she's on the show Zoe to the Max. Right. She's one oh. of the honorees. Okay. Um, there's quite a few guests also who are confirmed. Vivica Fox, uh, Maria Conchita Lonza is going. And Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, if, if, if you others. look online and, and look at the history of this thing, there, mm-hmm. there's so many celebrities that are that are uh, come as guests throughout the years. I, I was there last year. Great lineup. Um, before we get into that, though, I want to talk about Cassidy Mack. Yes. Um, impressive her. young lady mm-hmm. very very impressive first of all she was a foster kid mm-hmm. um, she's a star of her shows it on Disney or mm-hmm. I can't yes remember. I believe uh, Disney, uh, mm-hmm. Disney. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I had a chance to hear her speak at a function that uh, CUN was, was uh, putting on mm-hmm. this kid is amazing I mean, Aww. she really knows how to control her. And I'm talking about a room full of adults, so I'm not okay. talking about so talking to her peers. Like, yeah, this, this this kid is she something special. She talks about special. her experience. Is that the main yeah, thing? Yeah, her experience it? and her okay. charities and what she's doing with her life now. Mm-hmm. 
Wonderful, at wonderful. Oh yeah. Oh, and, geez. And, well, and 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 the other great thing about this, uh, you know, that people say, um, or the the statistics say that people are more afraid of speaking in public than of death, right? Mm-hmm. So this was unrehearsed. She got up there and smashed it. Wow. This kid's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, you're, you're, yeah. well, we're hoping to have her on the show next so week. So in other words, don't let life define you and that's your, right. That's right. Where that's you right. come from. That's awesome. That's right. Well, let's talk about the event. The event is benefiting. Can anybody just go if you have? I mean, yes. Well, it's tickets, but you know. but that's what I'm saying. But if you have a, I think that they would use leave it to just Hollywood or something. But yeah, well, well, to, to be honest with you, I mean, it, it is a fundraiser, but it's also fairly exclusive. So I think um, the way it's priced, it prices a lot of people out. Um, okay. th- we, we do have other events and other things that don't. Well, you price know, people, people gawking and trying to take pictures yeah. and Facebook and all that. Yeah, so, it's, it's very yeah. paparazzi heavy. Uh, I bet it is. Know. I bet it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is all benefiting at-risk foster youth uh, for their programs and education. It's all going to Children United Nations. So to find out more information regarding the 15th annual Oscar viewing party, it, you go to www.gochildren.org. Or you can call 323-452-4962. And you can find all the information. It is March 2nd. It starts at... Oscar night. Oscar night. It starts at 4 and it'll go about till midnight. Do you yeah. go to all of them? Or you just uh, no, no, no. Okay. I just go to the one that, that I'm sort of co-hosting, I guess. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit more of the event. What can people expect at the event? Well, so uh, Star Set at Event, um, the first part of it is um, the Oscar viewing party. So it's a, it's a dinner and people viewing the Oscars, um, performances, award ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second part of it is uh, an after party. So basically nightclub at, at a... At an estate, oh, and so the, hey. the the first part of it, which is the expensive part, it's a thousand dollars a plate, um, usually gets uh, more of the older crowd, o- older successful crowd. So the the uh, entertainers that that have uh, been around a little bit longer, um, and uh, a lot of the politicians and uh, captains of industry, mm-hmm. um, and then the uh, after party usually draws young Hollywood. Okay. So if you want to see a really good mix of the Old throwback meets the young up and coming. This is the party for you. Okay. Sounds and this is hosted me. all by Tommy Davidson and co-hosted by Stevens. Uh, well, uh, Tommy Davidson is the host for oh, the. He's hilarious. Uh, oh, you know, you know, he's Anna, no, Anna Foster kid. <laughs> wow. Are you serious? See how that works out. See that how it all really works. You guys, come on. You yeah. Probably got a lot of foster kids yeah. out there. So uh, Tommy Davidson will be hosting. Shadow Stevens is doing um, is co-hosting, but he's doing the the live auction. Okay. Um, and then um, the after party is. Uh, DJed by Dougie Fresh. Now, Dougie here's Fresh. here's the funny part about it. Um, I don't know if you saw my resume, but one of the things I used to own is a nightclub in Hollywood. Oh goodness! <clears throat> yeah, where and, was that? And there was a. It, it was called Excess at the time. Um, okay. I think now it's uh, Empire or something like that. Um, but there was a night where a promoter brought in Dougie Fresh, mm-hmm. and I remember the first thing I thought is Dougie Fresh. Like that's. It's like from the uh, early 90s, yeah, right? exactly. Mm-hmm. This guy killed it. Okay, he's so he's amazing, got it going on. Amazing, okay. amazing, Who amazing, knows? amazing. He's got his stuff. So when, when they brought up his name in the in the uh, planning committee, people were like, oh, Dougie Fresh. And I'm like, no, guys, trust. Get him okay. on board. Trust. Get him on board. Yeah, this guy Boy, is Y'all going to have a good else. time. Yeah, and, uh, got a thousand smacks. Come on out. Yeah, and Jeff Goldblum's band is performing, which, he is, sings. <laughs> which, is, which sounds funny. <laughs> he sings. <laughs> But well, he is one of the li- the star lineups. Yeah. Wow. But, but, go ahead. But that's like typically him. how how um, mm-hmm. CUN does it. They usually bring in um, sort of a Hollywood guy that also has a band. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the names that we we had out there this year was uh, Jared Leto's band, but turns out he's probably going to win an Oscar. So okay. It wasn't, wasn't available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. But that's that's sort of what they like oh. to do for the party is bring someone. La- last year it was Dennis Quaid and his band, which was wonderful. But um, Jeff Goldblum, I've heard. I haven't. I haven't. Seen well, him you have perform, to let us know but I but I've out. heard he's pretty um, amazing, and his band is pretty amazing. So we'll, we'll see. That is the 15th annual uh, viewing party held at the Beverly Hills uh, Warner Brothers Estate. You're not going to want to miss. I want you to find out more information on www.goldchildren.org. Uh, Very quickly, before we end the show, we always like to ask. The premise of the show is joy in my house, mm-hmm. the joy that we have in the midst of any situations. What does joy in my yeah, house mean to you here. in this day and age, especially for you and where you're at now? Joy in my house. Hmm. 
Boy, that's a tough question. You should have given me this. <laughs> no, no, we have to listen. You, okay. can, you can cover it. <clears throat> Joy in my house, first of all, is 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 family. Mm. Um, and second is consistently moving forward. So there, there's a there's a um, philosophy, and it's actually an American philosophy, but the Japanese have taken to it, and they've named it. It's called Kaizen. Mm. Don't try and knock it out of the ballpark. Just Every day, one oh. little inch. Every day, one little inch. You're gonna turn around in a month, and you're gonna go, "Wow, look how far I've gotten." Yeah, so one day at a time. So that's my joy right now is is applying kaizen to all the things that I want to do. And uh, every time I look back, you know, when I self assess mm-hmm. a month later, I go, "Man, look how far look I've gotten." Far I've gotten. Just oh, from every wow. day, just one little step. Not even trying to to do anything big. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. John, wow. Thank you for coming yeah. on the show. Yeah. Thank you so great much. Great guest, great show. Lolita, thank you for thank co-hosting you. Love the you guys. show. This is, awesome. this is Joy in My House, Van ladies Eric, and thank gentlemen. Thank you for producing it. I want you guys to stay tuned next week. Find us live every Sunday here at noon on LA Talk Live. Find us on Facebook backslash Joy in My House. All the information is going to be on Facebook backslash Joy in My House regarding the 15th annual viewing party. This is Joy in My House, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great and blessed day. Thanks, guys. Jesus' blood and righteousness Did not trust